Welcome back to Drifting Drams, y'all. I'm Ethan Turk. And I'm Katie. Today, we're going to do a fresh crack of Knob Creek 18. Um, this is the limited release for this year. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, it is 18 years old, bottled at 100 proof. Uh, it comes from Beam Centauri, and yeah, notoriously known for their wax. Okay, and now we're gonna see how bad this wax is. So I will say I commend them on this packaging. Uh, it is a nice wooden box, very nice placard. Uh, the latch is a little flimsy on the back. Uh, some people have reviewed. I almost dropped it while I was in the store. It was not a good thing. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll get into this bottle and see. Whoa, you got it off already. That's the best wax I've ever seen on a Knob Creek product. It's amazing. It only took them 18 years to get it right. Man. All right, pause for cork pop. Wow. Pretty solid cork pop. Solid. Okay. Yeah, only a little. So the wax was too easy. It lulled me into complacency. Okay, let's see how this is. So we've seen a lot of different reviews on this. I love me some Knob Creek, not as much as other people in the community, other gremlins, uh, but the 12 year for me is really where Knob Creek just hits its sweet spot. Uh, we've had the 15, a pour, a pour or two here or there. We never and picked up a bottle though. Yeah, it's it's good, but it's not anything that ever made us wanna to spend that kind of money on it. We actually saw this one uh, up in Kentucky and Ethan passed on it about a month ago. Uh, and then I went back this week and found it still sitting on the shelf and so decided why the heck not. Um, we've had some other products, uh, 18 year old products, sometimes can be a little bit oaky uh, for bourbon. Uh, so we'll see how this one goes. What are you getting yeah. on the nose there? Oh geez, so the nose for me on this one, it's, there's a fair, there's a healthy dose of oak, but it's vanilla cream frosting as well. If you were eating vanilla cream frosting out of the little tube, the old school Duncan Hines container that you'd get, right? Uh, with a wooden spoon made a barrel stave. Interesting. Um, I'm definitely getting a lot of baking spice as well. Um, maybe some nutmeg? Like, maybe that's just the oak too. No, I'll, I'll definitely give you a lot of baking spice there. And it smells, yeah, to me, I mean, I don't wow. know that much, but it has a very sweet nose. Um, and yeah. the oak does like shine through on it, so. Yeah, this is, this is a very, very sweet nose. So yeah, well, let's get into the taste and see what we see what we think of this, guys. Wow. Wow. That is a lot of oak. <laughs> but sweet. Very, very sweet. Well, to start. And That's a ride, though, man. Wow. So for me, it starts off very sweet, just briefly, front, very front of the palate, very sweet. And then it goes into some, to a lot of mature oak. Then you get to a more tannic oak for me. Yeah. But then it comes back to sweet. Like then I get the, the vanillas and, and the baking spice and all that at a sweeter, a sweeter point at the back end of this. And, and I get everything that you're saying there. Um, the finish seems a little thin to me on that. Um, the fact that it goes back to the sweetness after you have that big oak punch, um, and like Ethan was saying, the tannic oak punch, to go back to sweet, it just it's a little bit thin. Yeah, and so I'll call out, this bottle is only 100 proof, right? So typical Knob Creek down to 100 proof. For better or for worse, that's what you get. Um, it's, I, I agree with Katie. This one for me on the end is just a little thin. The nose is, is more complex after the first sip, but the finish is, um, is a little short for me. I really wish they would have done, uh, brought this up to 120 proof like they do with, uh, their, uh, private select reserves or whatever they call them these days. And who knows, we might see that. I mean, they did that with the Knob Creek 12 the year yeah. that it came out. Um, That's but true. I know it's now more of a standard release. Um, and the 120 is kind of harder to find these days, the 120 proof 12 year. Um, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at this pour um, by any means. Some of, 
it's not overly oaky uh, to me, I'm, uh, which is surprising. Maybe it is because it's only 100 proof. So how would you say this compares with something like Elijah Craig 18? Um, the EC18 that we've had, uh, we actually uh, got a pour of that um, from Tim Evans uh, when we were up at Whiskey Weekend. Um, and I really enjoyed that. It, to me, um, this has a little bit more punch uh, than that EC18, but I'm pretty sure EC18 is a little bit lower proof as well. Yeah. Um, so the proof definitely helps. Yeah, this. I think EC, EC18's around that like 86 or 88 mark. Maybe 94, is it normal I don't, Elijah Craig proof? I don't, I don't know. I don't think it, I think it's in the 80s. Okay. Because it's always suspiciously low for me, and I don't understand why they do it. The EC18 for me is more just straight oak. Like it's almost one note, whereas this, I do get more of a ride. And more of like a, a depth of experience here. And there's there's definitely a little bit of rye spice coming in on the end mm -hmm. now that I now that I've gone back in for like five sips. Um, <laughs> I'll finish mine before he does, but that, that that's normal. Um, Man, this is an easy drink, though. I will say, um, it, even though it's 18 years old, it is it's it's hitting you with oak, but it's not knocking you over the head with it, right? Um, it's it's not gonna wear you down or anything it's the kind of thing that you could just sit out especially like on a nice fall day like this is yeah. sit outside with this pour it's really going to treat you nice um now it's not uh it's not on the sweater scale like chad and sarah talk about but it definitely would go good on a nice fall day so now that we've tasted it um would you buy it again or would you recommend it? Let me let me go back to recommend first. Would you how would you recommend it? So I would recommend it for certain people. If you like older bourbon, if you like a big oak influence, then this is a bottle for you. Um, also, if you're not afraid of that 150, 180 dollar retail, probably more like 200 on the shelf a lot of places. If you're not afraid of that and you like oak in your bourbon, I'd say this is a buy for you. For me, I would definitely say I would get a pour at a bar um, if you could find it for a reasonable price. That yeah. that's the big thing. Um, you know, if it's in that twenty dollar range, I would definitely say grab a pour, see what you think of it, um, or find a friend that has a bottle. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's uh, good advice. So yeah, wow, um, that's good. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy with this. Yeah, I think Knob Creek. Um, I'm not gonna say they hit it out of the park on this one, but that's a solid offering. And let's be real, it's probably something that we'll see every year now and they'll keep milking us for whatever they can get out of us, right? <laughs> no joke. Well, uh, okay. thank you for tuning in to um, our episode today. Um, it's been fun. Yeah, um, thanks for um, for watching us explore the, the Knob Creek 18 offering. And experience it uh, together, which is which is always fun. Yeah. Cheers, y'all. Cheers.